When somebody writes a book for children, there needs to be two people usually. One person to write the book and another person to draw the pictures to illustrate the book. Some of the times I come up with books that are very old and the illustrations <coughs> the illustrations from the book are very old. But that doesn't mean the story isn't good to read. They still say something, these stories, to little children and big children alike. This book is about a little teddy bear called Corduroy by Dan Freeman. And in this case, Dan Freeman wrote the story and he drew the pictures too. A very talented man, don't you think? Corduroy. Corduroy is a bear who once lived in the toy department of a big store. Day after day, he waited with all the other animals and dolls for somebody to come along and take him home. I bet you you've all gone to a toy store and seen toys on the shelves. I'll bet you. Whoop. The store was always filled with shoppers buying all sorts of things, but no one ever seemed to want a small bear in green overalls. See corduroy there on the bottom shelf between the rabbit and the doll? Then one morning, a little girl stopped and looked straight into Corduroy's bright eyes. Oh, mommy, she said, look, there's the very bear I've always wanted. Not today, dear, her mother sighed. I've spent too much already. Besides, he doesn't look new. He's lost the button to one of his shoulder straps. See? See the shoulder strap that's not all the way down to his pants? To the bib of his pants? That's the part up here. Corduroy, Corduroy watched them sadly as they walked away. Corduroy knew what was going on. I didn't know I'd lost a button, he said to himself. Tonight I'll go and see if I can find it. Somebody has a magic wand and made Corduroy alive. Late that evening, when all the shoppers had gone and the doors were shut and locked, Corduroy climbed carefully down from his shelf. And began searching everywhere on the floor for his lost button. I wonder if he's going to find it. Did you see that escalator there? You never know. You have to be careful when you go near an escalator. Suddenly he felt the floor moving under him, quite by accident. He st had stepped onto the escalator and up he went. That he's been being careful though. Could this be a mountain, he wondered? I've always wanted to climb a mountain. Oh, look what happens. 
He stepped off the escalator as it reached the next floor, and there before his eyes was a most amazing sight. Corduroy was in a department store. A big department store because tables and chairs and lamps and sofas and rows and rows of beds. This must be a palace, Corduroy ga gasped. I guess I've always wanted to live in a palace. Corduroy had found the furniture department. He wandered around admiring the furniture. This must be a bed, he said. I've always wanted to shop to sleep on a bed. And up he crawled onto a large, thick mattress. All at once, he saw something small and round. Why, here's my button, he cried and he tried to pick it up. But like all the other buttons in the mattress, it was tied down tight. I guess Corduroy wasn't strong enough to pull it off the bed. He yanked and pulled with both of his paws until pop, off came the button and off the mattress, Corduroy toppled. Falling into a tall floor lamp, over it fell with a crash. Whoa, whoa, look what happens now. Corduroy didn't know it, but there was a, a someone else awake in the store. The night watchman was going on his rounds on the floor above where he, when he heard the crash, he came dashing down the escalator Now, who in the world did that, he exclaimed. Somebody must be hiding around here. He flashed his light under and over sofas and beds until he came to the biggest bed of all, and there he saw two fuzzy brown ears sticking up from under the cover. Guess who was hiding? I betcha Corduroy was scared. Hello, he said. How did you get upstairs? The watchman tucked Corduroy under his arm and carried him down the escalator. and set him on the shelf in the toy department with the other animals and dolls. Corder was just waking up when the first customer came into the store in the morning and there, looking at him with a wide, warm smile, was the same little girl he'd seen the day before. I'm Lisa, she said, and you're going to be my very own bear. Last night, I dreamed what I... Sorry. I counted what I saved in my piggy bank and my mother and I found enough for me to bring you home.
Shall I put him in a box for you? The sales lady asked. Oh, no, thank you, Lisa answered. And she carried Corduroy home in her arms. She ran all the way up four flights of stairs into her family's apartment and brought and straight to her own room. Corduroy blinked. There was a chair and a chest of drawers and a and alongside a girl-sized bed stood a little bed, just the right size for him. The room was small, nothing like that enormous palace in the department store. This must be home, he said. I've always wanted a home. Lisa sat down with Cordery on her lap and began to sew a button on his overalls. I like you the way you are, she said, but you'll be more comfortable with your shoulder strap fastened. You must be a friend, said Corduroy. I've always wanted a friend. Me too, said Lisa, and gave him a big hug. Do you have a favorite stuffed animal that you think of as a friend? I know a little girl that has one. And I wonder if another little girl and another little bigger boy have one. Believe it or not, I had a stuffed toy animal. I had a teddy bear and I remember having him in my bed and on top of my bed for a very long time. I don't know what I did to him, but in those days, you didn't hold on to things like you do today. It's nice to have a teddy bear. Bye-bye.